Thank you so much for joining us. The very first question that we have for you, madam, is that BGMEA is the largest textile association in Bangladesh with more than 2,000 members. How did your members respond to the project? Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, not all the members joined in, but whoever has joined in has um, individually also given us positive feedback about the project. And uh, do you feel that they are participating in the project with the same kind of enthusiasm that you would like them to have? No, I think everybody joined in voluntarily, and I think sustainability is a, is a discourse where everybody wants to be a part of. So everybody has uh, participated in it um, freely, and there was no compulsion on anyone. So I think it's, um, it's remarkable that people actually came forward and wanted to be a part of it. So um, what did you expect from the project? And do you feel uh, that your expectations have been fulfilled? Well, I think everybody is happy with the project. Uh, it's just that I think COVID-19 has uh, taken us uh, to another reality where we have to reevaluate the concept of sustainability, which now should also be linked to lives and livelihoods. So I think we would like a different twist to it. We would like to insert more discussions on, on how to make this uh, sector especially more mm -hmm. relevant and contemporary. So I think, you know, a little bit of um, alignment with the, the SDG goals um, and of course getting GRI to do their work and including them would, would be of uh, adding substantial value to the project. Okay, so you feel that maybe if there is more incorporation of SDG goals, then it would be even better fulfilled. Yes, indeed. So sustainability just cannot be a preset agenda. It has to be fluid, right. flexible, and it has to invite and welcome a lot of changes as well. I mean, it's just not about SDG goals. It's just about re-looking at the whole thing and, and re-evaluating what the industry needs right now, or rather what the globe or the world needs right now. So, uh, ma'am, what would you tell colleagues from your uh, sector about sustainability reporting? How would you encourage them? I think uh, sustainability reporting and self-reporting are, are critical at this point of time. I think self-assessment is needed. I think people should be sharing their own findings. And I, and I think GIZ has done a remarkable job of um, promoting this and for making it a part of our um, self-realization. So I will be strongly recommending everyone to be a part of this project and to move forward because um, at the end of it all, it's, um, it's our own perceptions and our own uh, reporting and assessment that matters most. Uh, Ma'am, do you believe that uh, most of the uh, participants see a business case in the reporting uh, on sustainability and following sustainability? I certainly think there's a, there's a huge business case of uh, sustainability reporting because the, the more transparent you are and the more you um, assess yourselves, the more you are sharing your own data and what you're doing, I think automatically mm -hmm. it adds value to the worth of the factory. So it's mm -hmm. important for us to to make sure that everybody understands, all the manufacturers understand that um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the extra uh, one mile that, that really makes one stand out. Do you feel that the COVID-19 lockdown affected uh, the project or the reporting process in any way? Uh, yes, of course it did. I mean, I think we could have gone a lot faster with a much more meaningful pace if COVID hadn't interrupted our lives. But then again, COVID has interrupted um, our, our every breath that you, uh, that you take. It's impacted our lives, our businesses, our points of view. So, you know, it's just a project. So automatically, you know, projects are undoubtedly um, expected to be impacted. So I think, yes, physical restriction and also the level of um, interest from everyone including, you know, really attaching priority to this, uh, of course, mm -hmm. has been included. And I also think uh, going forward, the, the sector priority is, should not be around firefighting. It should be above and beyond that. Um, Ma'am, that brings me to another question that uh, 
in about five years, what do you envision will be the situation of the sector and on sustainability uh, situation and reporting? Uh, in about five years, what's going to happen? Do you want to ask me? I have no idea. In about five months, what's going to happen? Well, we're probably going to be uh, recovering around 60 to 65 percent of our original businesses. And by maybe spring of next year, we should be up uh, to about 80 percent at the max. I think the whole conversation about growth has to be uh, rephrased. Growth is just not about value. Growth is about also being able to be in touch with the reality. So in a world where McKinsey has already anticipated a 35% loss of business, um, and you know almost 65% consumers are going to come down, uh, to say that we will grow in this sector in the traditional sense uh, doesn't make uh, sense to me at all. I think growth is going to be only a valid uh, discussion if we are taking into account that tomorrow's consumer is going to want more for less. So they will want more sustainable products at a, a lower value, faster. Bangladesh has huge infrastructure. So it's important for us to make sure that we understand that we will be growing in sync with tomorrow's consumers' needs. So I think what we need to focus on is our ability to retool our industries, to, to uh, address post-COVID reconstruction requirements. We will, of course, need a lot of lean manufacturing, a lot of value addition, aligning with uh, sector diversification, which is in sync with our current situation. And of course, mm -hmm. reskilling our workers. So we have uh, multiple challenges, including the four IR challenges, we have the COVID challenges, and of course, we have finance challenges. So with so many challenges, it's going to be pretty tough navigating this sector. And do you think that um, running the businesses in a more sustainable way will help to ease those challenges somewhat? I think sustainability is uh, an incredibly um, important concept which can give us an edge over the others. As it is, you know, we have just formed the RMG Sustainability Council and Accord has just left the country. So in RSC, we have three parts. One is the, the structural fire and electrical compliance. The other one is labor compliance. And the third one is, of course, the environment, AKA the sustainability issue. Mm -hmm. So we have taken sustainability very seriously in the sector. And as far as we're concerned, there are great factories which are already uh, doing a lot. Um, and I think uh, my colleagues from BGME, they've done enough um, pushing this project forward. So I, I believe, you know, stalwarts like them will move the sector forward along with, of course, many others on the board that we have who contribute um, to the sustainability narrative of this country to a great extent. That brings us to the last question. Um, what is your recommendation to accelerate the impact of sustainability reporting in Bangladesh? I think uh, there are just too many projects all, all over this country. I think if we could string uh, a lot of these projects and bring them together and stitch them and have a single platform, um, I think I would be actively recommending GIZ. I'm sort of hoping that uh, GIZ will continue to champion this cause of sustainability. And uh, through them, we would, of course, look for GRI, and sync uh, with the whole project. And also, um, I think a new discussion on lives and livelihoods. Um, so sustainable lives and livelihoods is going to, should be actually included in the whole narrative of sustainability. And here, we can't really also um, just um, keep the buyers out of the conversation because sustainable sourcing practices needs to also be brought into the conversation. So sustainable sourcing practices, sustainable supply chain, and sustainable self-reporting, along with special focus on lives and livelihoods, these all need to come into play uh, at one go. And, and I would welcome GIZ to, to host that conversation on a, on a broader platform. Thank you so much for participating and giving us this time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Me. Thank you.